romances. Welcome to the second video of the Crazy Victorian Epoch series. Today I will tell you what it was like to have menstruations in Victorian times, the medical and cultural beliefs, the methods used to absorb the blood for the pain and generally for everything that revolved around what yet seemed the mystery of the woman's periods. First of all, it was a bad thing to get the first period before the age set by the doctors. You just shouldn't. If you happened to get it earlier, it was better if you didn't tell, because suffering from an early menses was considered a misfortune that would bring sickness and death, and was caused by an excess of stimuli such as going to the theatre, having childhood crushes and listening to music. In the beginning of the 1800s, it is assumed that most of the lower social class women wore nothing to absorb the blood, this also in relation to the fact that they had very few menstrual cycles due to frequent pregnancies and malnutrition. If necessary, they could use sheep fur, sea sponges threaded like tampax, belts that held rags or simply keep the rags tied between the thighs. For the noble women who did not have much to do apart from closing themselves up in their rooms in shame to wait for the torture to end. The menstrual belt was the most sophisticated method used for absorbing blood, though not widely spread. A belt tied around the waist with a buckle to which a strap could be attached that held a soft cloth in place. Remember that their panties were opened in the middle. If you want to know more about the subject, watch my video on the origin and history of the panties. These pads were not at all comfortable and often irritated the skin between the thighs causing painful abrasions and were a hindrance when you had to urinate. These ancient sanitary towels got washed and were reused. In the past, the age of development of a girl and, most of all, of her first period happened later than the current one. Nowadays, girls get their menstruations between 10 and 16 years of age, whilst in the 18th and 19th centuries, the age of the menses was between 14 and 18. After a couple of years from the first menstrual cycle, the high-ranking girls made their debut in society between 17 and 23 years old, and after this fateful birthday, the poor girl began to be considered an old maid. From then on began her social decline. In Victorian times, the girls had their first menstruation more or less at 13 and a half years if they belonged to the wealthy class, and at 14 and a half in the poor and working class, probably due to the poor nutrition of the lower classes. The doctors believed that a woman's menses regularity was related to her mental health. Her body controlled her mind. One of the sources on which Victorian ideas about the menstrual cycle were based is the book Domestic Medicine by William Buchan, in which he claimed that not only menstruation was an illness, but relegated women's health to the domestic field as if it was not a serious medical problem. Bouchon and his contemporaries believed that while a woman had her monthly period, every effort of the mind, both intellectual and emotional, could be fatal, so it was not advisable to interrupt the menstrual flow. The woman should therefore focus on easing their mind in order to allow their body to process without it being prevented by mental nuisance. They were forbidden to ride bicycles, to use the sewing machine and take baths. I will explain later why this ancient prohibition to bathe in those days. Most of the women, however, did not have the luxury of lying on the sofa for a couple of days just in order to finish the menses, so they continued to carry out their domestic duties despite of the recommendations of the most illustrious doctors. 
in Victorian times, menstruating women were not even allowed to enter the public gardens because it was believed that it would cause the plants to dry out, and this belief still exists today. The medical texts declare that women were attracted to men only during the period of activity of their reproductive organs, that their sexual appetite was underdeveloped and reached its climax during menstruation. Lucky thing, isn't it? According to the sexist mentality of the time, women were attractive to men only as incubators for reproduction and sexual activity as was practiced by men at the time of the Bible. The termination of the menstruation was considered a sign of aging, so the woman then lost her main role as an incubator and therefore her value was reduced even more. Since women were considered unable to control their health, it was therefore the responsibility of the father or older male figure in the family to ensure that the cycle of a woman was regular and there was nothing that could prevent the menstrual flow. Theoretical doctors believed that the menstrual cycle was a kind of safety valve that discharged an excess of animal impulses as to reduce women to the state of animals. Furthermore, the leakage of blood was considered the consequence of a particular and periodic condition in which the blood vessels of the uterus prepare it for the insemination. This condition is similar to the period of animal heat. The physical expression of their reproductive function, menstrual cycle, pregnancy, breastfeeding, menopause, were the most common biological justifications adopted in order to limit the woman for taking part in activities that wanted to be the exclusive prerogative of men such as sport. The very first advertisements focused on women's menstruation started in this era, mostly for some corrective pills that helped to regulate the cycle by releasing problems due to the menses and relieving the associated symptoms such as general discomfort, nervousness, dizziness, headache, chest and stomach pain, and all the hysterical and nervous behavior that we know women go through during their menses. These were the only elements contained in the newspapers that were addressed to the ladies or to their husbands or fathers for the woman who could not read. These announcements never mentioned menstruation or blood directly, but contained coded information that doctors dispensed with high authority that certainly evoked fear and insecurity. In those days, the doctors believed that the poor body humors such as blood, yellow bile, black bile and mucus had to be properly balanced and circulate in the body in order to maintain a good health, therefore they thought the menses released the female body from the excess blood. If the blood did not flow but instead stagnated in the body, it could cause all types of diseases. Now we know that the interruption of the menstrual cycle is a symptom of systemic diseases such as tuberculosis or cancer, but in those days they thought they were the cows. So women avoided activities that they believed could have stopped the flow. The main precaution were not to take cold either by bathing cold water or working out in the cold wet weather. What did Victorian women do to relieve menstrual cramps? Well, they took drugs. Drugs such as opium, cocaine, marijuana were not only legal and easily issued, but often were part of the ingredients of the medical prescriptions of the time. Drugs were normally distributed to women in response to so-called female complaints, particularly for the pain associated with menstruation childbirth or female diseases such as neuralgia and hysteria. They also used herbal medicines but given the great amount of alcohol they contained it's difficult to say the relief was due to the herbs or to the alcohol that inhibited the pain. 
and even more radical treatment offered by a physician in 1872 was to surgically remove the ovaries in order to end the menstrual pain. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe and hit the bell in order to remain up to date with the new videos. Thanks, bye!